Rudy. <laughs> That's a great way to. <laughs> when I transfer over from Holy Cross to Notre Dame, I um, applied to Notre Dame every semester because it was right across the street. Right. All you had to do was walk right across the street. <laughs> And you saw Notre Dame every day. And I said, how can I get involved with the football program first? If I become a boxer, then I can get accepted into the Notre Dame football program. See, there's always a way to get involved. You just can't walk on Notre Dame football and say, hey, look at me. I'm, I'm a junior. I'm 24 years old. Uh, 25 now because uh, I had to go to Holy Cross for a couple years, but I've been in the Navy. People don't want to hear that. Uh, snuck on the boxing team when I was a student at Holy Cross. Oh, really? So yeah, and I was at I was on the Notre Dame student government while I was at Holy Cross because they never asked if you were a Holy Cross student. You were always there, so you kind of weave your way in. Whether that was good or bad, it didn't matter to me. It worked. It worked because people got to know you. Then they wanted you to win. Now you have a following of people. That's why in the movie, the chant did not start at that football team. It started right up in that student body. Yeah. They chanted, and it went around that stadium. And the football, you know, everybody got involved in. So there was a method to how you do things. What's the point here? There's always a way to get to your destination. It may not be the way they say, but there's always different ways. It, it even started in the locker room. They put me in the baseball locker room. Well, that gave me a goal to get to that football locker room. Every little step was important. Yeah. From getting your white pants to gold pants, from a, a new helmet, an old helmet to a new helmet. But you got all those things differently. You had to earn each step. So the odds were shrinking because you're earning each step now, and you, you go and you're when you get in Notre Dame academically, they surely don't want to see you fail. Mm -hmm. They're great, great educators. So when you get that support academically, you win academically. And that was why the energy and synergy and all the chemistry in the environment was right for me. For some reason, it just fitted me, my personality. So we showed in the movie these one-on-one -on -one drills, these ball in the ring, and the coaches see that. there's. Uh, or start to earn the respect because not and he did serving on the Notre Dame practice squad for two bruising seasons I got hit from the blind side one day I thought I actually died I scholarship guy gave up his place so I could dress because he knew it meant more to me than him mm -hmm. if that makes any sense right. well you don't know that's happening either you, you don't know who's going to bat for you because you don't say anything you just work hard and, and it, encourage guys and they, they kind of like that and, and uh, anyhow when they went in there I found out there was a letter I received from one of the guys who actually did it and when we were writing a movie script we just made up how I, I didn't know how I got the dress I had no idea because no one told me yeah. right they just at practice divine announces a new dress list and Rudy's one of them now and said wow that's right. and I was not going to go to practice because I literally was not going to go. I was because I, to me, I had a pity party, and good thing I had my buddy, the janitor who I worked with all the time, kind of noticed I wasn't going to practice. And not that he was profound about it. He just said, "Hey, Rudy, man, big game tomorrow, Georgia Tech. How come you out? You know, blah blah blah." I said, eh. And he kind of, we kind of talked about it, and then I went back out. I, I believe in my heart, you attract opportunity with these thoughts. And, and, and uh, I think that's basically part of the answer to, uh, to everything that happened at Notre Dame that day when once the team saw me dressing, they kind of wanted to see me play. Right. So that movie, in reality, the movie happened. It happened just like if it was a Hollywood movie. Just like you saw in the movie, that's how it actually happened. Just two days before the final home game of Rudy's senior year, it was his last chance to dress. I want Rudy to dress in my place, coach. He deserves it. He wrote me years later, says, I was a guy, myself and another guy went in and asked if you can dress in our place. And that's when Coach Devine says, yeah, we could dress Rudy. Or the other coach says, yeah, let's dress the kid. 
Coach, he deserves a dress. It was November 8th, 1975. Game day. Notre Dame versus Georgia Tech. It was a day Rudy would remember forever. When you hear the crowd, it's kind of like, is this happening? You don't even realize where you're at. You don't even know where you're at because you go into this zone. And the reality hits, the game starts. <laughs> that was the feeling. There is a magical feeling here. There's tradition. It, tradition just comes out of those walls. You feel the ghost of Rockney. You feel the ghost of all these great football players. Crowd cheering, yay, or whatever. 60,000 people just screaming for those kids running through that tunnel. The stage was set for a big game, and the crowd's excited. That was the setting for that football game. Notre Dame had to win to have a chance to go to a bowl game. Watching from the sidelines, even Rudy could never have dreamed what would happen next. The students at Notre Dame found out about Rudy through a newspaper article. And I talked about it was my dream to play for Notre Dame. It would be a, a dream come true if I could play football one time, one second for Notre Dame. Just step on that field during a game would be a dream come true. Rudy, 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 Rudy. Rudy, Rudy. Then all of a sudden, the players are saying, put him in, coach, put him in. And the head coach says, put who in, put who in? You know, he didn't know what they were talking about. About three minutes left in that football game, I said, why can't I play? He knew I wanted to get in the game. He, he actually grabbed my arm. There's a whole story of why he did that, but uh, the essence was, was Divine, but we were on offense. I said, I'm a defensive player, coach. I'm not going out there and play when I'm, no, I'd rather play when we're on defense. And we scored. Yeah. <laughs> and bingo. The minute I said that, Notre Dame scored. Now they had to put me in the football game. He says, go in defensive end, replace Brown or replace, what's his, Zapp, like, just go in, just get the hell in there, he says. And I go in there, and they come right off the field. Put me on the kickoff in two plays, and it was five seconds left in the game, I got the tackle, it was a clock. And in that huddle, that's when I knew I could get the tackle. And, and as we're in the huddle, I said, I can get this guy. And I remember lining up, it was so awesome, because everything goes in slow motion now. Now there's only five seconds left. I knew I could get him. And that's when the rally hit me. And the crowd started chanting, Rudy. As I tackled him, that game ended. And that's when the team picked me up. One, if not the only person to ever be carried off the field. Uh, the players were that way. I mean, did you see they, they were grasping the moment? They were happy. Yeah. Happy. They were excited. And um, I actually have a, have an actual, this is neat. You know, a lot of people, I'll show it on film here. Um, you know, they, they asked, did it really happen? There's an actual carry off of the actual people. Yeah. Wow. The real players, the real crowd. The real deal. That's amazing. Yeah. And that never happened at Notre Dame Stadium. Yeah. <laughs> that was a special moment. A moment of pride. The power of the dream is giving someone hope. You know, that's the most powerful thing you can give someone is hope giving your spirit to other people, giving them the feeling of, you know, it's worth it, all this hard work. It was worth it, even when it looked the darkest. It's like a little boy coming up to me today, a 10-year-old boy, said, I'm going to Notre Dame. I will never say to him, you can't. I will always say to him, you're gonna do it. <laughs>